welcome to part 45 of the Kicho Wong Dong series. In this episode, we're looking at the technique known as Bichagi, in our system called diagonal kick, in other systems sometimes called the twist kick. I have been putting off this technique for a long time because in my opinion, it is the most difficult single technique in Tang Soo Do. It's taken me many, many years to get to a point where I am comfortable with it. And when I was a color belt, I despised this kick and said to myself, I would never get good at it. And then what happened was I became an instructor and I realized I'd have to teach it to someone else. So I made myself get good at it. And now I feel comfortable with the kick, still not one of my top five. So let's get into it for the warm up. Actually, I have included a link below in the description giving a full 40 minute stretching routine specifically designed for this kick. Out of all the kicks in Tang Soo Do, I feel this is the one where you need the most flexibility, not only to throw the kick, but in order to make sure that your knees are safe and you do not cause injury. So this is why in my class, we do not teach this kick until brown belt and is not expected to be seen in a grading in our association until black belt. So it's a very senior technique. So please, if you are below this belt or have poor flexibility, do not attempt this technique. There are some tests I feel that you should be able to do before you attempt this kick. One is being able, while sat down, to hold your leg out in the extension and perform the, the kick. But what you have to realize is that static flexibility and what we call dexterity or dynamic flexibility are two different things. So just because you can hold the stretch statically does not automatically mean that you can do the kick at full speed. So there's a little test you can do where you can sit down and perform the kick and I would do that first. If you have the flexibility and if you have been taught it correctly, you can now start the technique. So this is all to do with the stance, the way you stand, which looks quite strange. It can look like a pigeon sort of foot positioning with your feet really far out and your knees bent. And my instructor would often call it the Charlie Chaplin stance, but the stance is everything. So you stand in this stance and just lift your knee to your hand and just lift it out and try and turn the foot. You can also put your hand on the wall and hold your foot in that position to know what we have in all our tank slow kicks, the chain position. So it's important to get the chain position correct. And then going side to side, you're going to very quickly flick your leg out, making sure that your standing knee is pointing the other way and not turning in. This will be very difficult when you start and you probably won't be able to A, turn your hips up very far or B, fully extend the kick. So until you can do that, do not move on to walking forward or kicking off the back leg or anything. But when you do have that and you can do it, I would then start the kick, like I say, off the front leg. So you just stand in the stance and you lift the knee and throw the kick out. It will be hard to know whether you're doing it correctly until you connect with something, but don't worry about that yet. That will come in time. You need to pull your toes back a la a front snap kick. Other styles will kick with the top of the foot, but in Tang Soo Do, we kick with the ball of the foot as it's often used as a very impressive breaking technique. And then you will throw the kick off the front leg and you will have obviously like all Tang Soo Do kicks one side better than the other, but please persist, it does help. And then what I would do is I would start moving forward with the kick. So your legs are quite wide, you step in, throw the kick, put it down, step in, throw the kick. And eventually this will come and kicking something softly like a paddle can help just to have a target there, just to know you're bending your toes back and everything else. But please, if you feel any pain in your knees at all, please stop, not worth being injured, over. You can perform this kick off the back leg, but unlike every other kick in Tang Soo Do, it's actually harder to throw off the back leg. So what you have to do is you need to turn your hips and get into that Charlie Chaplin stance on one leg, and then you're in the chain position and you throw the kick out. So again, start with the front leg and then go off the back leg. This kick can be done low, middle, but is usually reserved for being kicking high because it looks more impressive. And it comes at a very strange angle that is hard to see in free sparring. I'm gonna talk about some common mistakes now because they are the main things that will stop you from doing the technique correctly. The main one that I see is that the standing knee is pointing in the same direction as the kick and your hips are not opening up and therefore you can't throw the kick. 
People will do this because they don't have the flexibility, but don't do this because it puts tremendous pressure on your standing knee. Always make sure that knee is turned out. Sometimes you will come up onto the ball of your foot. This is very common and to compromise, but try and keep that leg down if you can. The second common mistake is the hands. When you first start doing this kick, your hands will do all crazy things like pulling your hand back and your hands going out to the side and everything. It will take a long time for your guard to stay in the sort of usual position of a kick. Your hands will just do crazy things. So again, my biggest advice is when you're learning a new kick, hold on to your dough box. And again, when you're practicing, it's okay to throw the arms out, but a good idea is to get those hands in as soon as possible. And the last technique is the foot not being turned in enough. So then you're kicking with an odd part of your foot, maybe with your little toe, and you can potentially, if you're connecting with something, break your toe or hurt your foot in some way. So again, it's about pulling that toe back. The best way to develop this is again, kicking paddles and things harder like shields or wave riders. So that takes time and only do that when you're very, very sure of the kick. Once you feel you have the technique down, it is then important to test it. The best test I have for that is what I call the moving paddle half circle. So when you first do the technique, the paddle will be very much in front of you. So you don't have to turn your hip out very much. And it will be awkward to kick like this. It won't feel right, but at least you'll be able to connect with it. And then your partner will move a couple of angles out to your outside hip. And then a couple of angles more, a couple of angles more, until they are standing completely side of you, which is how the diagonal kick will be thrown. And then once you can kick at this perfectly angle going right out to the side, you know you're doing the kick correctly. The next practice is targeting. This kick doesn't work if you hit at the wrong place. It's a very precise kick and it's very hard to kick at that precise place. So on this wave rider I'm using, it has numbers. And what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and kick all the numbers accurately. Some low, some middle, some high, and do it on both sides. And this will just demonstrate that my accuracy is correct and I know the kick can be used multiple ways. It's also great for flexibility and opening up your hip. The last test is being able to put this kick into a combination. There are many examples. I'm gonna put some on the screen. Some of the earliest ones I learned was a outside to inside Pekestrano Chago, followed by a diagonal kick, B Chaggy, and then followed by a Tolio Chaggy Roundhouse. That's one of the first ones I remember doing at Brown Belt and finding it very difficult. So the out to win, the reason that's good to put into the combination is because it kind of puts you almost into the chamber for the kick already to come back out. And you should have turned your standing foot slightly so you're in that weird Charlie Chapman stance. The other one I'm gonna show is a classic from all our black belt testings, which is snap kick, inside outside axe kick, and then diagonal kick. And that takes a lot of control and precision. And once you can do that, because the combination is so difficult, the diagonal kick on its own seems simple in comparison. There are many others you can throw the diagonal kick in again. And like I said at the start, it's very, very hard to block because people do not expect it in free sparring. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial on the diagonal kick. I hope I have given it justice because it is a kick that was my foil for many, many years. Again, please watch the stretching add-on that I've put below. That will be very useful. And if you have any questions below, please feel free to comment. Uh, as always, like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, thanks soup.